Hey there friends, how's it going? Today we're doing something a little bit different. I wanted to take a look at mega churches and these super pastors that you find in America. So I didn't even know this was really a thing until a few years ago and I've seen a few clips here and there of one or two specifically. So it kind of got me wanting to dive down the rabbit hole because for one thing, uh, a lot of the clips I've seen are really weird. And two, because apparently the average income for a pastor in America is about $50,000. And when I see that the richest one has a reported $300 million to $750 million, I really have to dig deeper. So the first one we'll start with is this Kenneth Copeland guy, who is the most wealthy, apparently. He is one of the two that I've actually known of beforehand, and the only one who haunts me in my sleep and doubles up as my paralysis demon, despite his busy schedule. I mean, look at that face. His grounds include a church as well as a private airstrip and hangar for a 17.5 million jet and other aircraft. And funny enough, regarding the jet, that was the thing that got him on my radar. First of all, I want to show you this interview where someone confronts him on his jet and how he called people who fly commercial demons. <laughs> Apparently, I found this video of them talking about the private jets. This is uh, Jesse Duplantis as well, whoever that is. He's not even on the list of the top 10 wealthiest, and he owns a private jet. <laughs> For lack of a better way to say it, I was spiritually high. I said, people yeah. were saved, yeah. touched, and blessed. Got in the plane that God so graciously gave us. What a nice God. As I was going home, the Lord, real quickly, he said, Jesse, do you like your plane? <laughs> oh, that's why he was busy. Okay. So this guy is like all the starving people. God doesn't mind, but, but he wants to check in and see if my plane is nice. Just to clarify, I'm not poking fun at religion here. I think if someone's religious and it's making their life better, that's that's heckin' awesome, man. You do you. That's great. I'm just making fun of the fact that these millionaires are preaching and acting like they're not in it for the money. Maybe they're not, but from an outsider looking in, I have no idea about this situation and it looks very scammy. <laughs> that's just my uneducated analysis, though. It's an odd statement. He gave, I said, well, certainly, Lord. He said, do you really like it? Oh, he doubled down. He's like, just making sure. Do you want a bigger one, Jesse? Jesse and and and, and I and, and others, Keith Moore and Creflo and all of us, they, the world is in such a shape. We can't get there without this. That's right. We've got to have this. Yeah, there's no way. God. He kind of makes a point when you put it like that. How can he reach loads of people without a plane? How is that possible? How can you just be in your room and reach loads of people? <sighs> just got to be a way. Oh, well. Right. And get in an air, get in a long tube with a bunch of demons. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine preaching to people and at the same time calling them demons because that's essentially what he's doing from my perspective. He's saying that, uh, that you become famous, everyone starts approaching you, and they're demons. So if you're famous, it's because you're preaching. And if it's the people approaching you, they know who you are because they're the ones you're preaching to. But they are demons, so we cannot interact with them. It's deadly. So this is the video where a reporter confronts him on this. Isn't it true that you want to fly commercial so that you can fly in luxury? How much money did you pay for Tyler Perry's Gulfstream jet, for example? Well, for example, that's really none of your business, but... Isn't it the business of your donors? Listen, I paid. <laughs> What's he doing? You kind of caught me off guard here, okay. Uh, at least, he, like, if he just said that, you caught me off guard, let me start from the beginning, that would actually be fine. Like, creepy smile aside. <laughs> if he just said that, that, that would be okay, and then explain what he means. But he just... I'll show you. Plane that we have that I bought from Tyler Perry. He bought it from Tyler Perry. Ah, oh. oh, he's so good. I, I had to take it. He made that airplane so cheap for me, I couldn't help but buy it. <laughs> Even the face. It's like a child explaining it. Like, it was so cheap. It was only $17 million. Oh, you had to buy it. I'm the victim here. All right, but I want to get to the demons because people are very concerned about that comment. Give me a chance here inside edition. Okay. I love your eyes. Oh, <laughs> that was creepy. Bless this woman maintaining a smile after he gave her that 
death glare while smiling and said, I love your eyes. He probably wants to keep them. He wants to take them out and keep them. Like, if this were me, I'd be running. I'd be gone. Me and my eyes would be way out of the country by now on a private jet. But look, I... I had to buy it. Tyler Perry forced me to. Do you ever use your private jets to go visit your vacation homes, for Good example? Good question. Good. Oh, he just said, yeah, yeah. Comes clean. Okay. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. Get in a long tube with a bunch of demons. Right. Okay. Jeez, he's we holding that not. death stare and that point. Oh, the smile. The principalities and powers. Can is he really scary or is it just me? Because he really, really looks like a villain. <laughs> I wanted to punch the guy out myself. I what? Guess he... Punch who? Do you think that's a good place for a preacher to be and prepare to go preach to a lot of people? I don't know, man. Just get some noise cancelling headphones. <laughs> He's just complaining about planes. Like, no one likes planes. Uh, maybe the pilots, maybe they like planes. How long is this interview? It's it's like 12 minutes and he was just getting into his car. It's kind of weird that he even engaged with this. Like the, the kind of person he is, if I were to guess how the situation would have gone, I would have thought he would have just got angry, smiled menacingly, got in the car, and ordered her assassination. Sir, thank you so much for your time What's today. Your Lisa Guerrero. Lisa? God bless, Father bless. Don't give, no, 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 don't, don't give, don't give him your name. Now he knows, man, he knows too much. He knows too much. I gotta say though, the guy looks like a villain. Okay, that's just my opinion. But in reality, he might be a hero. You wanna know why? He banished coronavirus. Called CODV-19 will be over much sooner than you think. Wait, one second, what did he say? Call CODV-19. CODV? What's he fighting? What has he been dealing with? I like how he's just reading from this little, this copy book page like we had in school. <laughs> he's just standing there reading his assignment to the class. Oh, but this is the video I was looking for. Yeah, he's very upset. Now he's learned the name now and he's very upset with it. And look, he's got rid of it just like that. <laughs> Burn! Burn! <laughs> like, on all fairness, no matter what your thoughts are on that, and especially back then, like, there was, you know, it got all political for some reason. But just spitting at people probably isn't the best way to combat it. <laughs> They're coming in with the harmonies there. He's got his uh, lackeys here with him. Burn! I'm telling you, it gets hot down there. I, I mean, je like Jesse says, it's Africa hot down there, man. And it gets... This guy must be so upset. <laughs> he's standing like two feet away as he's literally spitting and waving it towards him. I hollered at the top of my voice, in the name of Jesus, you get back up there where you belong. Ooh. Is he talking to, to COVD or whatever he's fighting? Because he seems genuinely angry. But I think that might just be because people can't fit inside his mega churches. Like, look at all those seats, empty. Those could be filled with people, covered in spit. But this damn COVD has ruined it for everyone. You know, the one good thing I could say that he would be very, very good at is being my personal laugh track. Okay, Kenneth. Knock, knock. Who's there? Uh, Kevin. <laughs> And just for a bit of context, in case you were wondering why he was laughing along with the entire church for like 30 seconds, this was the joke. Joe Biden's president. Ha 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 So, on the subject of mega churches, I only found out this was a thing like three years ago or something. Never heard of it before then. In Ireland, where I'm from, where I was raised Catholic, the biggest church in the country is St. Patrick's Cathedral in Dublin. And it is OTT, but it looks like a church to me. Like, look at it, this. You got the one sunny day of the year there, or maybe it just snuck through on this little brown, or the blue streak, sorry, I forgot the color of the sky there. And maybe it got covered up again like five minutes later, I don't know. But it, it's a pretty big church, like look at that, that's a person, it looks like an ant in comparison to that thing. This is the inside, that's crazy, I bet it's cold in there. Now, list of mega churches in the United States, which is the biggest? Gateway Church. 
Okay, that's not it, right? Surely that's not it. Oh my God, that's it. <laughs> the size of it. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, this isn't, this isn't church. This is just a concert. <laughs> Look at the scale of that thing. How many people are in there? One, two, three, four. All right, there's at least four, but it looks like a hell of a lot more. So this is the next guy that I have heard of in the past, Joel Osteen. Oh, wait, it says here, today the church is the largest in the United States with an estimated attendance of more than 50,000 people. Net worth is a poor... $100 million. But this is why I know him, because he received a lot of criticism for not helping Hurricane Harvey victims. He did eventually open his nearly 17,000... Houston mega church, but he was refusing at the start. This is the other thing I saw Joel in and I don't know if I even saw Joel It's this guy who looks exactly like him and just bluffed his way inside. Oh, I can take a selfie with him. One, two, three, amen Look at this. He's just gone down into the crowd mingling. <laughs> Quick selfie. Yo, let's keep it moving. Let's go. Stop him, stop him, stop him. They're all trying to get him and he's just walking out of there. <laughs> like, this is what I'm talking about. He's estimated to have a net worth of over 50 million, which is like, okay, he made money. Put that aside. But his church is taking 43 million a year in collections. How is that even possible? In 2017, 89 million for church income. More than 90% of that was raised from church followers and barely 1% of its budget went to charitable causes. Oh my God. It's interesting because I remember the Hurricane Harvey thing being a very big story and controversy at the time. Like even I heard of it and I was in Ireland. I, I didn't even know about this dude beforehand. But then he claims here that floodwaters closed the church, saying the church has been open from the beginning and we've always been open. How this notion got started that we're not a shelter and we're not taking people is a false narrative. Okay, so I found this video of someone actually going to the church when he said it was flooded and there is just... Nothing there. It's fine. How many thousands of kids and families, even if they can't get here, at least offer it. At least show you care. Like, again, I know this is this is just my opinion here, but even let's say I'm right and they're just in it for the money. And that's just my opinion. Just putting it out there. I know they've got a lot of money <laughs> if they wanted to come at me. But even if we say hypothetically there was an evil pastor, you'd think... This is a PR opportunity, like just let loads of people in, help everyone, save everyone, and then everyone will be like, wow, that guy's amazing. And like, they have the money to do it anyway. How much can a sleeping bag cost? Like, I I'm genuinely asking, I, I don't know. I'm just guessing it's under 40 million, but I really don't know. This guy is next on our list and I have never heard of him, Benny Hinn. I love how the caption for the picture is just, he uses the church's luxury goods and he's smiling like he knows that's the caption. Followers believe Hinn can heal any of their ailments if he prays over them. Okay, I have to see this. Oh my. Wait, what was that? I think he just hurt them, not healed them. He just threw them on the floor. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> He's like a WWE superstar. <laughs> that must be the weirdest job ever. He's just pushing people over and they're smiling because of it. <laughs> he just grabs him by the throat, throws him down, and then does some movements and that's it. They're healed, apparently. I wonder what was wrong with them in the first place. Oh, they're still not fixed, actually. He's pushing them down again. <laughs> okay, I think they're fixed now. Oh, no, they're not fixed. He's going in again. The third and final knockdown. Oh, now he's going to smother them with the towel. Are you ready, guys? Fire! Oh, my God. He's taking on the crowd. Where's the Halo announcer when you need him? Fire! Double kill. Triple kill. Oh my god, just a gust of wind! <laughs> that was one of his guys though, right? Yeah, he's just going for it. He's done this before. <laughs> Kill <Twasty. laughs> Even one of the other assistants fell over that time. Uh -uh. Get oh, oh, one of them's in trouble. He's sending him down. Oh my god! <laughs> they proper do whatever he says immediately. Like that guy, and he knocked the plant, moved the equipment, he does not care. <laughs> they must lift down the pastor. Oh, he's attacking the crowd again. No. <laughs> Locate your exits, everyone. Locate your emergency exits. Take that on it. Oh, my God. Look at that. 
The first guy, look at him, he's dead. <laughs> he's stuck. Wow. Look at this, he runs forward, then collapses at full speed. The leg just stays up there. And then the other leg follows it up as well. I think he's suffocating under there. Somebody help him, he's still down there. All three of them. Okay, you didn't even try that time. They just fell. <laughs> the other time, at least, he was giving it a whip. That time, he just kind of brush them and they all just fell down. It must be that, right? It's that the people want to believe and they're already kind of engrossed in this belief and then they just kind of go along with it, right? Or maybe he has the power of God in his shirt, I don't know. Oh, my God. <sighs> Take the fresh breath of the spirit! I was about to say, I was literally about to say, you know what? If it wasn't for the fact that he's making millions and millions of dollars and the whole thing seems a bit shady, this actually seems calming. Everyone's holding hands and humming. Softly now. And then... Take the fresh breath of the spirit! Hadouken! Mauricio, thank you so much for this um, very poor resolution video of our pastor just attacking people <laughs> and Hadouken <laughs> I didn't do it. He took out a whole crowd there. At least they think, it's hard to tell. Glory to God, you're not bound to this chair. The day will come, you'll walk out of it. And the next what? We're back to Kenneth now attacking people. He just pushed a man over in a wheelchair. And all he's saying is thank you, Lord. Like it's a good thing. Uh, this is Joyce Mayer and she's just straight up calling God. Could I speak to God, please? Oh, oh, she's on the line. Sorry, it must be a secretary or something. I'm trying to figure out what the number is. That was like a four, a, st a three maybe, a one, and I don't know what the last one was. It was kind of a half-assed attempt at spinning it. Oh, God, so good to talk to you. Yeah, this is Joyce. So casual, like, oh, God, yeah, yeah. What's, what's up, bro? What's going on? I, uh... I got some wishes listed down. Should I give them to you or Santa? <laughs> the audience are clapping like, this is crazy. She's calling God. That's... Whoa, <laughs> they're blown away by this. And dear God, I remember laying in my office floor, literally holding on to the legs of the furniture to keep from running away from God. Uh, oh my God. What? <laughs> I don't care enough to learn, I'm sorry. I'm just confused. <laughs> And they're clapping again, and I don't know why. They're cheering and clapping, and she's just lying there. And by that, I mean she's she's lying down, okay? Before you come at me with your millions of dollars, I meant you're lying down. But God, he's not right! And I remember holding on to the legs of my, my furniture. God! She's still up there. This has been like a minute and a half of her freaking out on the ground. <laughs> she is so amazingly real and is so very relatable. Come again? The thing is, this is on her channel. This is what she wants to highlight. To be fair, I can kind of understand why people might get involved with this. Because it's like, you know, she's up there being silly and talking about God. And she doesn't look stereotypically evil. <laughs> Apparently, she's a net worth of $8 million, but she also has a $10 million jet, so I'm not sure how that works out. Televangelist Jesse Duplantis says God told him he needs the new Falcon 7X jet. That if Jesus was physically on the earth today, he wouldn't be riding a donkey. This is back the original guy who was talking to Kenneth, and they're talking about planes again. This video is all about various preachers who really want planes. Bourbon Atlanta congregation for a new Gulfstream G650. His ministry settled for a used one. Oh, the poor guy, man. That makes me so sad. He had to settle for a used jet? Oh, now I'm angry. <laughs> but some of these pastors we've looked at today just seem like they're taking advantage of people. People who are probably just good people, whether it's for their money and that's all tax free because they're running a church or for their time because they get loads of free help from the volunteers who are coming to help out something they believe in. And that's where the problem is for me, but I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just a dude who never leaves his room. Thank you all for watching. I'm not accepting donations, but you can like and subscribe if you want to support me. Check out more of my content here and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.